The United States government has chosen to reapprove atrazine, a second most used pesticide in the United States. Dr. Tyrone Hayes, the youngest professor to get tenure at Berkeley University, the fourth most prestigious university in the country, said that his research showed that atrazine is feminizing our men. It is actually turning our men into women, and that's what his research has shown. Let's listen to his research and what he learned. Okay, went, went something like this. <laughs> so we did these experiments, and I was just making this up. I didn't know what we were doing. I said, hey, let's put four females in there, because I wanted to know if these atrazine-treated males could compete and behave like a male. Put four control, four atrazine-treated males, and just see what happens. Right? Everybody was a virgin. Nobody had experience. They had never seen females before. Here's how it went down. We put them in, and I know you, the guys are thinking, that's not the kind of sex ratio I wanted to club, but the idea is we wanted them to compete, so the females had to be limiting. So we put them in there at 7 p.m., the lights go out, put on a little Marvin Gaye, and then <laughs> come back the next morning, and you could count. We, so we had stitches in there so we could tell who's who, and then you could count who, who was successful and who wasn't, who hooked up, as the young people say, and who did. Real simple. And when you do that, we found out that the atrazine-treated males, and we did the trials four times, actually we did them five times, but one student one morning kicked the pool and they broke up and we couldn't get the data. But we did it four times. Yeah, she got fired. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Only two atrazine-treated males ever got the female out of four trials. But not only that, see, I'm an endocrinologist. Not a, I'm, so I can't just observe. I got to measure something. So imagine you're at the club. The lights come on, and somebody's going around writing down who's hooked up with who. And then he pulls you apart and sticks a needle in your heart and takes out some blood. That's how this went down. It doesn't kill them or anything. In fact, they like it. So if you look at their testosterone levels, these males, you find that the atrazine-treated males have, on average, lower testosterone. But more importantly, if you look at the individual levels, and you, the ones with the hearts are the ones who made the love connection, it seems like there's a threshold dose that if you don't have above this amount of testosterone, either the females don't like you or the other males beat you up. And these atrazine-treated males just don't have enough testosterone to be competitive. So there's a real behavioral effect. Even if you don't turn into a female, you still don't do okay as a male. Less testosterone in our males? Are some things starting to make a little sense now? Now, I could have published that. Males turning into females and losing their, their vir, not virginity, <laughs> virility. That's, that's the word. It's Freudian slip there. I could have published that. But again, I had tenure. I was in no hurry. I did another series of experiments that I call the Motel 6 experiments. <laughs> See, in this case, I just got them a room. No competition. I just said, I'm going to give you a female little Marvin Gaye, and then we just let them lay eggs and we counted the number of fertile eggs. So it was a way of measuring the fertility of each male. So literally, so some eggs don't hatch at all. Some are in various stages of development. So, and it was a complicated analysis. There's a student sitting there going, one, two, three, four, for weeks. But if you do that, sometimes the answers are simple. You find out that, at, that control males fertilize about 85% of a female's eggs, whereas atrazine-treated males, only about 15% for two reasons. I'll tell you one, and then I'll show you one. One of the reasons is the atrazine-treated males don't even try. They just sit there and watch the females lay eggs. They don't have enough testosterone to show the behavior. So it has nothing to do with competition. Even if there's not another male, they're not interested. And there's more to that story, but it's not published yet. I'll have to tell you some other time. The other reason is, who, who, who knows statistics and likes, you like p-values? You know what I like even more than p-values? When you can see the difference. Can you see the difference between a controlled testis and an atrazine-treated testis? So I had students that had nothing to do with raising the animals or the behavioral stuff or any of the project. They could just sort these photographs just by looking at them. Because what happens if you're a control is you have testicular tubules. And see, that's all sperm in there, all that dark stuff. You're, you're, you're ready to go. 
Whereas if you're atrazine exposed, most of your testicular tubules, see here's the outline, have a little cellular debris. They're devoid of sperm. So you don't have enough testosterone to show the behavior. And even if you do show the behavior, you don't have enough testosterone to maintain sperm production. So you don't do so well. So we published another paper. Atrazine induces complete feminization and chemical castration <laughs> in male African caught frogs. Male frogs growing ovaries in their testes with eggs ready to reproduce. Crazy. And you already heard this this morning, but it shows you how close human hormones are to frog hormones. The estrogens that promote breast cancer make my frog change color, and the human pregnancy hormone is so similar to this frog's hormones that it'll make this frog lay eggs. So as they tell you what atrazine does to this frog, you should be thinking about, if you don't care about frogs, what might this chemical do to me? And that's where we're going to end up. The third reason I tell you this story is because this was an incredibly significant this history. Because once they develop new pregnancy tests, hospitals just threw these frogs out. So I can go to San Francisco or San Diego and collect my frogs for free rather than pay the company. Which I guess technically makes my frogs African American clawed frogs, but that's a small, <laughs> that's a small detail that's not relevant to the story. So the first thing we discovered, and mind you, I was working for the company at the time, is that if we put these frogs in atrazine, the male's larynx or voice box didn't grow properly. Now that's bad news. Let me tell you why. Because male frogs sing and females don't for the same reason that men have deeper voices than women. Testosterone, which you heard a little bit about this morning. In fact, Lou gave half my talk. Just his was on alligators and mine's on frogs. So because there seemed to be a problem with testosterone, we said, well, Let's look at the gonads, because that's where the testosterone comes from. And when you do that, so here's kidneys dissected out. If you're not used to looking at frog gonads, here's testis, which males should have. But then this guy's got some ovaries. He's got another large testis. He's got some more ovaries. There's a whole party going on in there. He ain't even got, he ain't even got to leave the house. But that's <laughs> not normal. And the reason. The reason I say not normal, I get accused of making some kind of judgment. It's not a judgment. All I mean is that frogs are not naturally hermaphroditic. Males are males and females are females. There are fish that are naturally hermaphroditic, but no frogs. And people get confused. Who knows why? Somebody always asks me, aren't frogs naturally hermaphroditic? Who knows where that comes from? Jurassic Park, yeah, somebody always. So apparently in the Jurassic Park, frog DNA made the dinosaurs change sex. That's science fiction. I like to stick to science. Everything I'm going to tell you here today is 100% true, or at least as true as I know. So then we went to the testis. Imagine this big circle is a testis. Or actually, imagine somebody you don't like, because we're going to do some nasty stuff to it. <laughs> if you have a testis, you should make testosterone. This, who knows what this word means? It's a portmanteau. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that word right. Portmanteau. It's when you stick two words together, right? Like smoke and fog, you get smog. Twist and jerk, you get twerk. Testosterone means testicular hormone. It's two words stuck together. So it's the male hormone. We propose, and actually Lou Gillette was the first to, dis to suggest this, that atrazine turns on aromatase, which is the enzyme of the machinery that converts testosterone into another portmanteau, estrogen, which means the generator of estrus. It's the female hormone. So it's a little bit simplistic, but the idea is that if you're exposed to atrazine, your testosterone goes down, so your larynx wouldn't grow, and your estrogen goes up, so now you start growing ovaries and some other things that I'll show you. Which is okay if you're a female, maybe not so much if you're a male. So we tested this. We just measured testosterone levels, which we can do, just like they do for humans. We measured control males, and these are daytime low levels. They'll go up to like 30 or 40. And then we measured atrazine-treated males and then control females. And we showed that indeed, these guys had very low testosterone. Our government didn't care about Dr. Hayes' findings. Instead, they said it was just fine. So these effects occur in other frogs than just African clawed frogs. And so we did this study where we looked at North American leopard frogs. And, and, and this doesn't look much like a frog, but these are testes. And all this junk in the trunk, these are eggs that have yoked up and that are bursting through this male's testes. Now, let me tell you where we're at in my story. Now, we eventually published this in Nature, another one of those magazines that my mom can't get at Barnes & Noble. But at this time, I had been approached by the Environmental Protection Agency because the company was complaining about 
about me. And I broke, what's it called? In, in, embargo. I broke embargo, and I sent the data to the EPA before it was, it could have cost me my publication. And the, the EPA, I'm going to say his name on camera, Tom Steger, emailed me back, and he said, well, Tyrone, I still have the email. He said, well, thank you, Dr. Hayes. This is an interesting finding, however, not one that we see as an adverse effect that would trigger reassessment and regulation of the herbicide atrazine. Dr. Hayes found atrazine can affect reproduction for three generations. Affected by atrazine that its grandmother was exposed to. Company says, oh, it's just rats. But I say, I, I don't know how we can afford to take that risk. When I think about my little girl, 19 years old now, when I think about the fact that my grandchildren, your grandchildren, my grandchildren could be affected by chemicals that we're using today. It moves me in a much bigger way than just a little boy who likes frogs. The reality is that colleagues already shown that there's a strong correlation between atrazine and birth defects. If you get pregnant during peak atrazine exposure, you're more likely to have a baby with birth defects. Some of those birth defects include, and I apologize for the images, Find podcasts for Smart Health Talk on iHeartRadio or YouTube.